May we prepare our hearts to proceed into our chapel service on this day. We do give honor to Almighty God and we do give honor to our president, Dr. Lester C. Newman, to our provost, Dr. Pruitt, to the cabinet, to the faculty, staff, and students. We are approaching at a time that we will have our last chapel service on next week. But we most certainly thank God for the opportunity to be in worship throughout this school year. We're going to proceed with the program for today. The scripture will be rendered by Mrs. Denise Dinkins. Prayer by Reverend Stacy Price, Sr. And then we will have the musical selection coming from the Jarvis Christian University Choir. And then announcements. And then the introduction of the speaker. May we proceed in that order. The scripture for today is 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 7. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. We reject all shameful deeds and underhanded methods. We don't try to trick one another or distort the word of God. We tell the truth before God and all who are honest knows this. If the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan, you know, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we ourselves are servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the faces of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for all that there is in this day. For without you, there would be no day for us to even praise your name. But because you have sought fit for us to be here in this place at this point in time, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you. We ask you to bless us as we proceed. We ask as we proceed, all that we do is to glorify you, Master. We thank you for the people that are present today. We thank you for those that have a line to come out to see and to hear your word. We ask all that you would bless us as we get ready. Allow your spirit to discern for us so that we may leave this place better than we came in. Forgive us for the time that we run short, but we are but yet hard-headed children. But the blood of Jesus Christ, a token that gives us another opportunity to make our relationship better with you. We thank you, Lord. We magnify you. We lift you up. We ask that you would bless the speaker today as she gets ready to partake to us the bread of life. Let the spirit discern for us. Listen, all we ask is in the name of Jesus Christ, 
and the people of God say amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen.
Good morning. These are your morning announcements. There will be an information graduation meeting for all seniors on today, April 18th at 5 p.m. with Dr. Glenelg Lee Pruitt and the Meyer Auditorium. Please be present. Attention all JCU seniors, register now with Work in Texas, East Texas Workforce Free Registration, Wednesday, April 19th, 2023, the Jarvis Workforce Center, Meyer Building. From 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., the TWC Mobile Unit will also be on site. Apply for funding and free resources. All students are welcome, you must apply. Contact Dr. Dorothy Langley for more information at extension 2904. Attention all students, please complete registration for summer 23 and fall 23. Advisors, we ask that you please reach out to your students to ensure that registration is completed. Registration will be held in the mirror room at 10 a.m. on April 19th, April 26th, and May 3rd. You are cordially invited to attend the Student Ministry Association End of the Semester Fellowship on Wednesday, the 19th in the Fellowship Hall of the Chapel. The Jarvis Christian University Study Abroad fundraiser trip to Greece will be held on Sunday, April 23rd and April 30th at 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Green Acres Bowling Alley in Tyler, Texas. $30 to play two games and bowling shoes are included. Young Adult 2023 Mission Retreat. If you're interested in attending this retreat, it's in uh, Fort, Worth, Fort Worth, Texas on May 19th at 8 p.m. through May 22nd to 10 a.m. Registration fee is $100. And for the first 15 to register, you'll stay in the Airbnb used for meeting space. Everyone else will be staying at the South Hills Christian Church. These are for persons that are 18 to 29 years of age. Registration closes on May 4th. Sunday worship service will be held on April 23rd at 10.30 virtually. Please make preparations to attend. Thank you. These are your morning announcements.
Good morning, Jarvis. Um, I've been sent up here to do a good morning to everyone, uh, faculty and staff. Uh, somebody in trouble. I've been sent up to introduce our speaker and um, not going to be very hard, but she didn't give me a bio, so I'm going to try to wing this. Um, her name is Michelle Price, and um, I've had the privilege to be married to her now for 38 years. And God is, oh, y'all can clap, don't be scared. 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 Um, and we're, we're reading, I, I should read the bio. I'll read the bio that we have here. It says, Reverend Michelle Price is an engager of people, a conference organizer, speaker, and ministry builder for women. She believes that every woman has the potential to be 10, that is a teacher, equipper, and a nurturer of other women through biblical teaching and examples. She is the founder and director of Arroyo's Hope, a nonprofit where she ministers to the needs of underprivileged children and their families in the Gladewater community. She is organizer and teacher of the Red Rock Women's Community Bible Study. She serves as an administrative assistant to the prayer director of Sheila B. Ministries of Dallas, Texas. She was licensed to preach on October, the 20, October 2015 and ordained in August of 2021. She is the founding member She's a founding member of Fellowship Community Church of Gladewater, Texas. She and her husband, 38 years, Pastor Stacy Price Sr., are servant leaders of the FCC. She is thankful to have shared this journey uh, <laughs> with her husband who founded FCC September 20, uh, 22, where she also serves as the executive pastor. Reverend Michelle Price and Pastor Price have two beautiful children, Shanice Price and Stacy Jr. Reverend Michelle also enjoys having fun and watching movies, baking with her four grandchildren, Javon, Trayvon, Kiara, and Justice. Her life scripture is, and we know all that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to God's purpose, Romans 8, and 28. So without further delay, I bring to you our speed. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's right. We have the musical list.
Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. To Dr. Newman, to this uh, staff here at Jarvis University, Christian University, to the students, I bring you greetings all the way 15 miles down the road from Gladewater, Texas. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. What an awesome opportunity it is to stand before you on this morning and to give you a word from the Lord. But before I do that, I have to introduce some guests that came with me. Uh, you guys, my husband, my pastor, Pastor Stacy Price. Stand up, baby. My sister, uh, Claudette Clay, could you stand, please? She's just going to raise her hand, y'all, because she don't want y'all to know that she's really the oldest sister. <laughs> and then my beautiful mother, Ann Clay, raise your hand, mama, so they can see you. <laughs> Without her, they would be no me. I thank God for them coming and being a part of this worship service with us on this morning. I'm going to take this out because I tend to be a walker, and I don't want to walk off and leave the mic. So this morning, for a little while, I want to get your attention. I want you, if you have your Bibles with you on this morning, if you could turn to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7, and we're going to walk this word, see what um, this word has to say to us, and uh, hopefully you will leave here encouraged, and uh, God will speak some things into your life on this morning. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, how we bless your name, O Lord God. Lord, I just stop to say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for this privilege, for this opportunity, Lord God, to share your word with the students and the staff here at Jarvis Christian College, Lord God. Now, Lord, I ask that you would open this word up to us, make it rich, real, and relevant in the lives of your people, Lord God. Allow it to consume this space, Lord God, for anyone that hears, Lord God, for them to take it out, to hide it in their hearts, and then to share it with a dying nation, Lord God. We'll be so ever careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And it's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Now listen, y'all. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have to have y'all talking back to me because if you don't talk back to me, then I preach a long time. And I know we're under a time constraint. So I need to hear, I need to hear from you out there. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Amen. See, I got, some, I got some people over here with me today. All right. So let's take a look at this 2 Corinthians verse four, um, chapter 4, verse 7. And I'll be reading from the, end, uh, the New Living Translation. This one verse says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that all surprising, surpassing power is from God and not from us. I, I, was, I wanted to take a look at this scripture because this scripture is very, uh, it has a lot of, lot of meat in it. And as I was preparing and um, walking through my house and through the yard and reading different translations and listening to different sermons on this particular uh, scripture, the Lord brought back to me uh, this incident that occurred when I was, I think I was in the, the, the kindergarten or the, or the first grade. My last name is Clay. Y'all know kids can be mean and we can be unforgiving sometimes. I had this particular kid in my classroom uh, that, was in cl that was my classmate, I should say, um, he liked making fun of me and my last name. He sometimes he would call me mud pie, dirt cake, dirty, um, anything that had to do with dirt and clay, that was my name during that period of time. Now, 
I said that kids could be mean, and he was, but I also said that kids could be unforgiving. Even after they get to be 40 plus years old, I still consider him as fat. He was the fat kid in the class. But I didn't, I didn't call him that. I didn't call him that. I could have, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. See, I'm, so his last name was Williams, and this kid, he would... He would just he was just relentless in calling me all these names. And one time we was on the playground and he had dug in and he was calling me all these names. And somebody went and told um, our teacher and she came and she basically pulled both of us to the side and she gave us a good talking to. I don't exactly know what she said, but you know, when you're a uh, kindergarten, first grade, anything they say has to be profound. So our, we played and he had to sit up under the tree because he couldn't play anymore because he was picking on me. At the end of recess, it was time for lunch. And during lunchtime, my grandmother worked in the cafeteria. So when there were special things on the menu, my grandmother would give me hers. And this particular day, we had chocolate rose. Chocolate rose, y'all, you would give up your mama for a chocolate rose when I was in school. And she would give me her chocolate, her extra chocolate roll and her milk. And so I was sitting there, I had her chocolate roll, I had my chocolate roll, I had her milk. And I was sitting there and he was down at the end of the table and I caught his eye. He was looking at me and I was looking at him, but he didn't have an extra chocolate roll. <laughs> so every time I would take a bite of my chocolate roll, it was like it would be in slow motion. <laughs> I had all the facial expressions that went with it. Look back down at him. He was looking at me. All of that. I realized at that point that it didn't matter if my last name was Clay. It didn't matter if he called me dirt. Because see, in that little vessel, in that little girl, there was value. And not only was there value, God allowed me to have victory on that day. So as I was reading through this particular scripture, I see <clears throat> where Paul has show, is showing us the value that is placed inside of a clay pot. A clay pot that doesn't have any value. He is showing us that there is value in the vessel, and then we have victory because what we house inside our vessel. So let's take a didactic look at what Paul is telling us in this scripture. First of all, I want to talk about the value. Because we have this treasure, Paul says, because we have this treasure. Now Paul, the prolific globe trotter, tells us that this treasure is more than riches. This treasure represents the wealth of God. And do you know that there is a difference between riches and wealth? Well, let me tell you, I had to do a little research and I found this clip with the help of my husband. Y'all know who Chris Rock is? Y'all know Chris Rock? Yeah, Chris Rock had this, uh, this, this stand-up uh, show that he did called Never Scurred. Never scurred in 2014. And he basically explains what wealth and riches are. He put it like this. He said, Shaq is rich. Would you agree? Shaq is rich? You, would you agree Shaq is rich? But the man that signs check, check, checks is wealthy. Y'all catch that on the way home. Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey 
is rich. Bill Gates is wealthy. So what he's telling us is that riches can be, they can be lost. They can be lost. And wealth never runs out. It never runs out. The treasure that we have is wealth to us. This treasure will never run out. It will never run out. This wealth passes down from generation to generation. It says it's something like the treasure is an unspeakable glory. The treasure, the light illuminates the knowledge and the majesticity of the glory of God. This light shines into the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. This wealth, this wealth is passed down from Old Testament prophets to New Testament truth tellers. This wealth is passed down from big mama to mama, from mama to us. This gospel is housed inside of us. And you know what the bad part is? Some of us don't even realize how wealthy we are. Listen, God through, he thought so much of us that he entrusted the message of salvation to this frail body of a human being. This vessel, which carries the message is worthless. This leads me to the vessel itself. The verse says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay. We have this treasure in jars of clay. Found this clay pot at Walmart. This clay pot is worth maybe $2. And on the side of it, it has a crack that is running down the side of the pot. When I bought it on yesterday, the lady asked me, she says, do you really want this? It's cracked. I said, yes, ma'am, I do. So I brought this vessel. Come here, Reagan. This pot. Y'all, this is my diamond. We go away. This was my church member when we were in Fort Worth. I'm going to give you this vessel, this pot. It's all cracked. Based on the outside, it really doesn't look worth anything. She said, y'all, you really gonna get this, really gonna get this to me? Hold on, don't go, baby. Now I want you to open it. Don't break it. As she opens that, y'all, this clay pot, like I said, it's made of dirt, really has no value. I paid $2 for it, but it really isn't the pot. That, that is the treasure. It's what's inside the pot that holds the treasure. Show them what you got. <laughs> See, that clay pot can be housed for anything from garbage to riches. It has no value. Something that can be cast away, you can have that. Something that can be cast away, can be thrown away. And so many times we get caught up, like Reagan did, this is really this pot. This is what you're giving me, this pot. So many times we get caught up on the external, and we don't realize the power and the value of what's on the inside. So, and I know that some of you guys are getting ready to graduate. I heard the announcement. And I know that you are looking for a career path that is going to put money in your pockets. But let me share this with you. Know your worth. <clears throat> Let me say that again. Know your worth. Not only do you need to know your worth, you need to know where your power comes from. Your worth will come from your experience and your power will, become, will come from those that you know in high places. See, Paul knew this worth. On so many occasions, he referred to himself as a bond slave or a, a servant. And he always recognized that his power came from above. Paul focused in this passage was not on the perishable container, but in the priceless content. God's power dwells within us. Knowing that the power is in us, not ours, keep us from pride 
and motivates us to keep daily contact with God as our power source. I've heard so many times uh, that you complain because you don't have power, but then we refuse to tap into the power source. There was an old man who told this story about this car. It was a classic car, it was a clean car. The owner of the car spent many hours washing and waxing and shining the chrome. He would take it and make sure that the outside of the car looked good. He would take it to a local mechanic and he would, uh, for repairs from time to time, but he really didn't know what he had. One day he was driving so full of pride, showing off his new, his, his car, and he had a wreck. Almost totaled the car. He had the car towed home and parked it in his backyard. Weeds began to grow around the car and the dents began to rust. Weeks passed and the mechanic came by. Says, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. And so he told him, he says, I wrecked my car. The mechanic says, well, where is it? The owner told him, oh, it's in the back. You can have it if you want it. It's no longer any value to me. So as they made their way through the weeds to the car, the mechanic looked at the car, surveyed all the damage. Then he opened the hood. He looked at the motor and he told the owner, I'll take it. And the owner looked puzzled. Why do you want this old beat up junker? As the mechanic closed the hood, he looked at the man and said, it was never about the exterior. It was about the inside. The inside is what housed all the power. God has entrusted this earthly vessel the inside of this earthly vessel, he has encompassed us with his power, his abundant power, his exceedingly more beyond power. And that, because we have that power, we have victory. This is my third and final point. Victory, victory, this, the verse says, all surpassing power of the all surpassing power of God. Paul says that we are pressed by every side, by trouble, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but we're not abandoned by God. We are knocked down, but we're not destroyed. What do we have? We have Jesus. What they did to Jesus, they will do to us. Trials, they mocked him. They sent him to an old rugged cross. Those same people that were calling him Hosanna, Hosanna weeks before, now they are putting that and saying, kill him and kill him. That is the same thing that they will do for us. The same little boy, the same little boy that was calling me clay dirt. The same kid. Paul is opening this gospel up to him and he tells us that what Jesus did amongst them, he will do for us and that is lived. Listen, I wanted to encourage you on today. God has placed something valuable in each and every one of us. He has given us the power of salvation, this gospel of salvation through God's power, and we have a duty. He is challenging us to impart this, this that he has housed inside of this earthly vessel, to take it out and to share it to someone that needs to hear it. Somebody needs to hear your story. No matter what your story is, somebody needs to hear your story. Somebody needs to hear how you barely got in school. Somebody needs to hear how you barely passing your calculus class. Somebody needs to hear that you don't even know if you're going to graduate. But through the power of Jesus Christ, God has made a way out of no way. God has opened doors that men would shut. 
Somebody needs to hear that on today. So don't close yourself off because you think that you are worth less. Paul has told us that we are worthy, that we are worthy because God has placed this treasure inside of a jar of clay. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, how we bless your name, O oh Lord God. How we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to stand. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for making room in this clay pot. Now let us take this word and wrap it in flesh so that the dying world can see a living Savior in it and through it. We'll be so ever careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Price, for that powerful and inspiring word from the Lord today. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for blessing us with his word. I want to remind you, next week we will be having our last chapel of the school academic year. And we want to make sure that all students, faculty, and staff are in place on next week. God bless you. Let us stand. Father, as we depart this place, Lord God, allow your word to permeate in our hearts. Allow it to manifest, Lord God, in our, act, in our actions throughout this day, Father. And we'll be so ever careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.